rice, the farmers get around by just polishing it down more. So you see smaller rice in Japan. Is that the it? They, they, I, oh, they, that's interesting. So they polish the rice down to a smaller kernel yeah. size, and they get a they get a better yeah. reading on it. How interesting. That's the yes way. What they're doing with the scrap rice, who knows? A lot of Chinese tourists, and now they're trying to attract tourists from Malaysia, Muslim, uh, consuming a lot of this dangerous material. So they figured, well, the government figures they got to dump it and sell it to somebody, all this food. And then these guys would be here for only a week or two, so just let them gorge on this radioactive food. And then, uh, unfortunately, the attitude of the Chinese is that their food supply is so contaminated. Uh, what's the problem with going to Japan? It couldn't be any worse. So wow. the bad news for them, huh. it is worse. And, uh, wow. Yeah. You know, uh, so, that, you know, super low prices are being offered to them on these super low tours. So uh -huh. it's kind of a very inhumane, cruel thing to do. Uh, it is. To reel in people who've been Horrible. so isolated and come from a country mm -hmm. that has food safety problems, and then to dump all your radioactive food on them. It's like something very horrific. I mean, it's something very yeah. inhumane going on. Speak if you can so a little fact, closer. Talk I would a say it's kind of an act of war. It's an act of war, if anything. Well, yeah. It's, it is. Genocide, talk a little louder war, into the. On, yeah. Talk a little louder in the phone, Yochi. Just a bit, if you can. Okay. There we go. All right. Yeah, we have a bad. Yeah, there's always a bad line here. So. It's it's fair. Okay. It's okay. Um, All right. The the efforts of the average Japanese to get a real, honest reading on the danger they face are hampered the same way we are over here by a government that is not going yeah. to tell them. And what they're no. they're relying on are independence and various people from the academic community who have come forward, who are trying yeah. to do honest readings and spread the word. But there is, as I talked to uh, Richard Wilcox a couple of months ago, yeah. uh, he's living over there with a the family, been on the program a number of times, and I asked him, Richard, how many people in Japan really understand what's going on in terms of the environmental damage, the toxicity in the food, mm -hmm. land, air, water, and everything? He said about 1%. That's all that know. He said they really don't know. Yeah, now that, yeah, they may know, be conservative on that. Fear. There's a lot of fear. But so they don't want to know. That's right. Yeah, That's they don't have any real... Well, we would do the same here. People are people. Yeah. Well, I think in the United States, I understand when I was in Milwaukee, the, sort of the headquarters for all the work at Fukushima 1 and 2, there were a lot of workers, American workers from GE there on the streets. You know, a lot of bars there they do a lot of drinking to take their mind off the problems of being contaminated. Uh, apparently, I saw some people who look like DOE, government people there, Americans. So Americans are neck deep in this, and what they're neck deep in is Japan's nuclear program. Uh, America, the George Bush administration, perhaps even before that, they've been supporting Japan's nuclear bomb program. And these sites that we're talking about, it goes back many, many decades to uh, hydro plants like the ones in Norway. You have to understand that Fukushima... Uh, a lot of mountains there are created by uplift, so it's the only part of Japan with uranium. And uh, if you build dams there, if there are lakes there, the water will uh, become irradiated and it will create tritium. Tritium is uh, like deuterium. It's uh, basically water uh, uh, without, would have uh, two, two neutrons, and it's very necessary to make uh, hydrogen bombs uh, to explode plutonium and make uranium uh, bombs to explode more efficiently. And so this uh, plutonium, I mean, a uh, tritium extraction process has been going on there a long time. There's no way that the American government uh, could not have noticed that. In fact, probably supported it all along. And this is, uh, explains all these strange uh, quasi-nuclear, they, they, they were these strange new nuclear reactions we saw at Fukushima and the explosions. Remember all the series sort of bluish lights and flashes? Well, when tritium goes up like that, it'll be, uh, you know, the meltdowns will trigger the neutron bombardment of tritium. It will then release neutrons, but it will also split the water molecule into uh, 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 into uh, supercharged uh, isotopes, which then will be combined, and then will release, basically creates a very strong electromagnetic field and electrical field, which will then cause a lot of this sort of lightning, these flashes of light. So uh, tritium is sort of the missing element which explains the nature of the explosions that we saw. They're not hydrogen explosions. These are tritium-enabled uh, explosions in the steam out of the reactors. So they're not doing that with the dams now, I don't believe, because you can make it nuclear reactors. But obviously, reactors three probably was used in tritium production also. So 
this is a part of the missing puzzle and why the American people and the Japanese people do not know what's going on. It's all about weapons production. The illegal, uh, if it ever really comes out and the, either government really admits to it, that's the end of the, uh, the, end, the non-proliferation treaty, it's the end of the U.S.-Japan security treaty, basically nullifies all those treaties. Uh, and uh, basically it'll, it'll make shambles of America's effort to rein in Iran, North Korea's nuclear programs also. And there is a massive double standard here. When we have a massive site this large, this extensive, operated this long, with American technicians and engineers over there, American support over there, it's going to be very, very tough for the United States to point these pointing fingers at uh, Iran or North Korea. It's a much smaller program. We have, uh, unfortunately, uh, a curve that is going the wrong way. The accumulation of radioactive isotopes, again, in the ground and the water and the fish and the animals is not stopping. It's only increasing, and it's going to continue that way. There's just no reversing it. We even have now yes. found increased levels. Now, these are small. They're not dangerous, but they're increased levels in pine needles all up and down the West Coast. Certainly in crops, right. they found increased levels in prunes recently. The food supply here has been clearly impacted. Is it dangerous to eat? Not yet, but uh, things are only going to continue to compound and get worse. It is said within the next three to four years, the waters off the coast here are going to be heavily contaminated with the cesium twins and other heavy isotopes. So it's, it's not a good situation, and we're just not getting anything at all from the government here. Nothing. No reading, no, no program, Well, no the real, testing, real threat nothing. in the upper atmosphere, we talked about these strange uh, weather that's happened in the United States this year. Uh, now a massive drought. It's, as I told you, as I flew over, massive amount of contamination in the upper atmosphere, changing weather patterns. We may see a lot of the United States, turn, North America, turn into a desert. We may see the depopulation of Scandinavia, where there's basically no more water left. This is this is causing massively, you know, massive things going on. Could it only have happened? These levels only have to have if it, uh, weapons grade uranium were involved. The bomb has backfired, and I think on the anniversary of Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombing, the chickens are coming home to roost in the United States of America. So far to date, Japan has dropped 168, at least, Hiroshima-grade bombs on itself with this disaster. Yeah, and it's all drifting across the Pacific in both directions. Yoshi, thank you for being here. Talk to you next week. Uh -huh. Be well. Detox and enjoy. All right. Okay. Okay, good night. Yoshi Shimatsu in Bangkok, Thailand, trying to detox from his time in the Fukushima area in Japan again. Uh, one of the world's most accomplished environmental reporters. Uh, remarkable to have him on the program each week. Do your research, do your studying, stay informed. Uh, we'll do our best to help as we can. Good night. Talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>